What's up, Laker fans? The Lakers took Josh Hart with the 30th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft. Let's take a closer look at his game. I believe that Hart's outside shooting will translate well into the NBA. He's very fundamentally sound and well coached. He does an excellent job of presenting the ball handler a target and then squaring up after the catch. He's very much on balance and consistent with his footwork. In very limited possessions, he was the best player in the country coming off of screens. He has an excellent feel for when to fade and when to curl. He does a good job of getting his feet set out of zipper cuts as well, which the Lakers offense incorporates. The data shows him to be a little bit better at back cutting over plays than he is, although this is a nice play here. There are times when he misses the read altogether and that wouldn't show up in his synergy day. When attacking closeouts, he has a strong preference to drive left, which he's pretty good at. But once he's made up his mind to attack and close out, he gets tunnel vision. Let's start with the positives. Hart is relentless at attacking the basket, so if the big blows a hedge, he's going to get all the way to the cup. Even in soft hedge and drop situations, he'll take it to the big if the hedge is weak. And he's effective when he gets going downhill coming off of handoffs. And he's just okay shooting jumpers out of the pick and roll. And he has a nice teardrop when he's able to jump off of two feet. He rejects screens about 20% of the time and is in the 66th percentile when he does it. He uses those little euro steps and jump stops to create space. He does it a little too frequently for my taste though and sometimes gets himself in trouble. So now we move on to my concerns with him in the pick and roll and they're significant. He has a really hard time with hard hedges and traps. He misses the short roll man almost every time and opportunities are lost. Hart never averaged three assists per game in his college career, which is a low number considering how much he had the ball. His handles in these situations are very basic as well, as he doesn't have much of an inside-out dribble, a hang dribble, or a crossover. On a happier note, I think he's going to kill it in transition next to Lonzo. Villanova really walked the ball up and played at a very deliberate pace, and he didn't get a lot of opportunities to run. 
but when he did get a chance to run, he was very good at it. Once again, he's relentless at attacking the basket and isn't going to settle for spotting up behind the three-point line. Mahar will have a learning curve in terms of actions and early offense, but in straight transition, he's very good. He has great body control and balance around the hoop and was one of the best finishers in the college game as a result. His outlet passing is my favorite part of his passing game, as he does look to move the ball ahead. Hart doesn't have a great first step, nor does he have a lot of ball handling ability, so he probably doesn't project as a great isolation player in the NBA. He does have decent triple threat skills, including a nice jab step that he can raise up out of. And a good low right to left rip through. But his go-to move is a spin move off of a drive. He can demonstrate that tunnel vision in these situations too though. To be fair though, this is the one situation where he'll read the dump off to the big correctly. Hart is a little bit difficult to evaluate on the defensive end because Villanova plays a very unusual style of play. First of all, they trap a lot. Secondly, they switch as much as any college team I've seen. Hart switches twice on this play alone. As a result, Hart often gets switched on to bigs. He wins some and loses some, but always competes. conventional situations, he does a nice job of retreating and cutting off his man's ankle. He's also capable of ball pressuring weaker ball handlers, although he won't run into as many of those in the NBA. He'll lose his man from time to time off of the ball. He's very locked into his helper responsibilities, but sometimes he turns his head and his guy is gone. As I mentioned, Hart is an eager help defender. Here, his teammate gambles for a steal and doesn't get it, and he rotates over to stop the drive. Since Villanova switched all the time, his ability to close out is a little difficult to evaluate because they're always scrambling, but he does give effort. But it can also get turned around and lost a bit, which you'll need to fix on the NBA level. I 
think his most impressive defensive attribute is his ability to close out and recover. Watch as he chops his feet and then slats to stay in front. Hart is often described as a winner and I wanted to find some specific examples of what that means. First of all, he's willing to give up his body. And then secondly, he really competes on the boards and is one of the better rebounding guards in the NCAA. Ultimately, Hart is a tough kid who competes hard and attacks the basket aggressively. I have a little more questions than most do about his defensive capability, but some of that may be a result of the scheme that he played in. His niche in the NBA should be as a 3 and D guy with good locker room presence. Alright, that's all the time we got for this one. I'll have Kyle Kuzma and Thomas Bryant videos coming up, as well as continuing my Lonzo Lakers series. If you could support my videos by clicking the Patreon link in the description and just donating a dollar per month, that'd be very helpful. Alright, I'll catch you guys next time.